Our scripture for this communion Sunday comes from the Old Testament. Old Testament book of Deuteronomy and the sixth chapter. Deuteronomy 6, and I'll be reading verses 4 through 12. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. And you and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the door, doorpost of your house and on your gates. And when the Lord your God brings you into the land that he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give to you with great and good cities that you did not build, and houses full of good things that you did not fill, and cisterns that you did not dig, and vineyards and olive trees that you did not plant. And when you eat and are full, then take care lest you forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery. Lord, we come before you and we just praise you for your word. Lord, we praise you that you have given it to us and within that word you reveal yourself. Lord, take now your Holy Spirit and apply that word to our, heart, that word to our hearts and to our lives. In your name we pray. Amen. You know, we live... I think anyway, in a funny age, uh, I have a physical therapist that told me the other day that uh, the reason they still have a landline telephone isn't because they have bad cell service where they live. That's why I have one, but she says that's not why they have a landline. She has a landline a phone because when she loses her cell phone, she calls it and she can find it. That's what she does. And then she told me that she has to find her cell phone because there's an app on her cell phone that helps her find her car keys. And sometimes the app on her for the keys doesn't work. I, I don't know. I said, well, how did you get here this morning, Wendy? She said, by the grace of God. You know. <laughs> but uh, what's funny is, is she says she's got uh, friends that are like that in her life, I guess birds of a feather. But I can't talk as far as forgetfulness goes. And, so I'm, I'm like the old joke, I get up from one room and go to another one, and uh, when I get there, I, I forget what, I'm, what I've gone after, which means I believe in the here after, because I say, what am I here after? And, you know, amen, I got, <laughs> uh, why do people forget the small things? You know, like where you put your car keys or where you leave your cell phone. I think it's this kind of forgetfulness is due to the fact that we're just so busy. We get distracted. We, we are inattentive. But that kind of forgetfulness of things, if we're not careful, it can become a forgetfulness of people. You know, we're forget, we forget that we're supposed to pick someone up at a certain time because we're busy. We're distracted. We forget that we're supposed to meet someone for dinner because... We're in a tent of them, we, we think it was next week, but it was this week. Or we just forget what day it is, or, or both. And that can lead to a forgetfulness of, of God, I think. We might sometimes find ourselves in the middle of a church service. I don't know if anyone here has ever done this, but, you know, our, our attention is supposed to be on God and God's Word, but instead we're stewing over an argument that we had this morning before we got here or one that we had yesterday or sometime during the week. And before we know it, uh, we haven't heard a thing the preacher has to say, and you think, well, he doesn't have much to say anyway. But, you know, that's where we get. And for example, uh, bef and before I ask you this, I want you to know this has happened to me on more than one occasion. Have you ever left worship and you can't remember one hymn that you sang? And no cheating Without looking at your bulletin, can you remember the first hymn that we sang? 
you know, what happens is, is we get on autopilot. I was going to ask about the second one, but Kay knew that, didn't you, Kay? <laughs> you know, we, we get on autopilot, don't we? And, and we just go and we forget where we are. We forget what we're doing and who we're supposed to be focusing on and who we're supposed to be worshiping. And when we do that, we have, in fact, forgotten God, haven't we? Because we focused on ourselves. And as bad as that sort of forgetting God is, and as sinful as that might be or is, it seems like it's just a little thing to us. It's just a small sin. And usually something happens to uh, snap us out of that, to break us out of that forgetfulness, and we redirect our attention toward God. But that kind of distractive and inattentive forgetfulness, I've discovered, can become chronic. And it becomes more sinful. For example, Moses warns the people of Israel, only take care and keep your soul diligently, lest you forget the things that your eyes have seen, and lest you depart from your heart, unless they depart from your heart all the days of your life. Now that's a warning against the kind of forgetfulness that characterized the children of Israel when they were in the wilderness. Think about it. They'd seen God's mighty acts of judgment upon, uh, upon the Egyptians in those ten plagues. And they had been released from the house of bondage. They had experienced great deliverance as they passed through the Red Sea. They had been provided uh, with manna from heaven and water from the rock. They'd seen miracle upon miracle of God taking care of them. But when they heard the report of the spies concerning the land of promise, what happened? They, forget, they forgot everything that they saw and had experienced. And they forgot it because of their distress and their fear in the moment. And that led to the forgetting of God. And God knew this tendency in his people. Moses knew about this tendency in his people. So if you read through Deuteronomy, you'll hear this warning over and over again to be careful not to forget the Lord your God. That's kind of a funny sounding way of saying it. Careful not to forget. Be careful not to forget. But it's a way of emphasizing the importance of not forgetting. It's a way of reminding us that these things require our full attention. Because our default mode is to forget. You know, we forget birthdays, we forget anniversaries, we forget promises, and we can forget God. And that kind of careless forgetting, it's, uh, it's bad. Even when it doesn't involve forgetting God, God it can be uh, the cause of all sorts of stress in our families, uh, stress in our relationships, so we must watch ourselves that we do not forget the Lord and the things he's done for us. And this careless kind of forgetting can lead to a, a more dangerous kind of forgetting, a deliberate forgetting that can sneak up on us. Now sometimes, though, deliberate forgetting can be necessary. It can be positive. For example, it was necessary, this deliberate forgetting was necessary in the life of Joseph. He had to put away from himself the memory of the evil actions of his brothers, selling him into slavery, throwing him in a pit, wanting to murder him. He had to deliberately forget that so that he could forgive them and be reconciled. He determined not to dwell on the evil intentions of his brothers. Instead, he chose to remember the purposes of God in everything that had happened. So he told his brothers, Do not fear, for, I, for am I in God's place. As for you, you meant it for evil. But God meant it for good, to bring about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. So it's necessary for us when we are sinned against, when somebody offends us, when somebody transgresses against us, we have to deliberately forget it. We don't need to rehearse it over and over because all that does is drive it deeper and deeper into your mind. Uh, Lori was at a, uh, an in-service and some lady was talking about what happens in your mind, the chemicals in your brain. And when you rehearse something in your mind, your brain doesn't know the difference. Those same chemicals of stress 
literally bore it deeper and deeper into your mind. When you relive it, that's what you're doing. So we need to deliberately forget these things. You know, we need to put, our, put it away from ourselves so that we don't develop a grudge against the person who has wronged us. It makes me think of Paul in Philippians 3.13. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. But there's also a negative aspect to deliberately forgetting. It's more dangerous than carelessly forgetting. And, it's, and that is the deliberately putting out of our mind the object that we ought to be remembering. In Deuteronomy, we find many warnings against that. In Jeremiah, we learn that the people did not follow Moses' uh, admonition. Instead, they forgot God and all the things that he had done for Israel. And how had they forgotten? They forgot his commandments. They forgot his commandments. Take care lest you forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments and his statutes which I command you today. And that careless forgetting eventually developed into a deliberate forgetting. They carelessly forgot that God was present and active, even though he's invisible. He is here. He is present. He is active. And they stopped obeying his commands. They forgot the first commandment. They forgot the second commandment. And they made a God for themselves, a God that they could see. They made a golden calf. And they bowed down before it. It said, this is the, the God who delivered us out of Egypt. They called it Yahweh, but it was not. It was an idol. And that's in Genesis, or excuse me, Exodus 32. And that's your homework. Go read Exodus 32, 1 through 6. Uh, you'll read about that story. God said it this way to Jeremiah, but my people have forgotten me. They make offerings to false gods. The deliberate forgetting of God developed into a trust of false gods a worship of false gods, even as their fathers forgot my name for Baal, Jeremiah says in Jeremiah 23, 27. Israel's persistent forgetting of God, as we've just seen, led to idolatry, which led to the judgment of God upon them. The Israelites forgot God initially through carelessness. They were distracted by the needs of the time. They were focused on the issues that were in front of them. And they neglected the foundational truths of the past. They disobeyed the commandments intended for their health and for their protection, and they forgot God. And that's what we see in Deuteronomy 6 that we read this morning. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. Then he tells us that these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. Now, why does he tell us that? So you won't forget. It's written in the imperative. That's a command. Put them in your heart. Put them in your mind. You shall diligently teach them to your children, and you shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise up. Now, those of you who have taught a Sunday school class or taught anything, don't you know more than the people you're teaching? And if you don't, you better. I mean, don't you learn more than when you're teaching than when you're just sitting there and being taught? You learn more that way. So when we teach our children, we're learning. We're burning it into our hearts and our minds. And this teaching is to occur all the time, isn't it? When you get up and you're eating your your Cheerios, when you're walking around the house, when you come home, when you lie down at night, when you wake up in the morning, we're to have the, the Lord and his word before us. Why? Because we forget. We forget. And the Lord knows how forgetful we are, so he tells us to bind his commands as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlet between your eyes, write them on the doorpost of your house. You know, a... Uh, you remember when people used to tie a string around their finger to remember something? You ever heard about that? That's an old thing. But uh, bind the word of God on your hand, it says. Today we might say, put a reminder in your cell phone. <laughs> Let that thing go off. Remember the word. Remember who you are. Remember who God is and what he has done for you. Remember that today in the midst of everything. And then verses 10 through 12 
speak directly uh, to the heart of 21st century Christians here in America. They essentially say that when the Lord has blessed you with everything you need, you have plenty of food, plenty of clothes, a comfortable home, a good retirement income, you have all the blessings of life, that is the time that you are most vulnerable. When everything's going great. And then at the end of the verse 11 it says, when all that's going on, when you eat and are full, verse 12, take care lest you forget the Lord. When you eat and are full, that's when you better take the greatest care. We think that we've provided all these things for ourselves, but it's God. He's provided for us and has given us these things. We read about the children of Israel in the Old Testament. We discover that it's when they were prosperous, when they were fat and happy, that they forgot the Lord's commands. When they were filled with the good things that God provided for them, it was at that point that they forgot God. And they were so satisfied with the things of God that he had provided, that's where they found their satisfaction, was in the things instead of God. We need to be careful that we don't find our satisfaction in the things that God has provided instead of God himself. We need to be filled up with God and not the things that he has given to us. We've been blessed, you and I have, with the wealth of material things. So we have to be careful to remember the Lord and his commands. Now we, here in the 21st century, we can, it's easy for us to point the finger at Israel and take them to task because they forgot God. Uh, we look, read the Bible, you know, we see that complaining in the wilderness. We see the cycle in there you can read it it's of apostasy and then judgment and then restoration and we you know we see that in the book of judges then we see the good king bad king going back and forth back and forth and first and second kings and these things emphasize the israelites constant failure to heed the admonition of moses take care lest you forget the lord your god who brought you out of the land of egypt we get tired if you read through Jeremiah, you might get tired of reading chapter after chapter that's devoted to the enumerating of the sins of Israel and telling uh, of Israel's coming judgment. We say, well, we're better than that. We don't do that. We're superior. We're, some, we're more spiritual than they are, and we, therefore, are less likely to forget God. But there's a lot going on here, isn't there, in our day and age. There's a lot of busyness in our time. I mean, when you're so busy that you've got to have a landline to call your cell phone to find it, you know, maybe you're too busy. And that's the end of that conversation that I had with my physical therapist, and she was the one who said that, not me. So, you know, we forget that the Scriptures warn us that a turning from the commandments of God displays a forgetting of God, and that applies to us. We tend to think that ignoring or rather not fully live up, living up to one commandment of God, that's a small thing. Well, I did most of it. You know, I'm mostly getting that done. But the result of such thinking is just disobedience. It's the beginning of idolatry. It's the beginning of making God in our own image. You know, somebody says, well, I don't like that picture of God. I like this. Well, that's when you're starting to make God in your own image. We read in the New, Old Testament, New Testament, we read in the Scripture, and we see this picture of God. That's the picture. <laughs> and we have to learn to love God for who He is, not who we want Him to be. Uh, Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. But we ignore His commandments, and we find them easy to ignore and his commandments aren't just the things he said. I consider his commandments to be all of Scripture because he's the Lord God. He's the Lord God. So when Paul writes in Ephesians 4, Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, as God and Christ forgave you. You know, we read that. But, you know, we want to hold on to offenses. We want to hold on to our resent, resentments. We want to walk away when something bad happens and we want to turn our back on it because it feels good to hold that grudge. But that's not what Christ teaches. To hold a grudge, 
to envy someone, to covet what somebody else has. All those things are steps on the way to forgetting God. Hebrews 10.25 tells us not to neglect the meeting together as is the habit of some. But it's easier sometimes to stay in bed on Sunday morning. I remember when I could do that, wasn't a preacher and had to be here. You know, it's easier to do that, isn't it? There's other things to do. I mean, you know, I'm going to have some family time. That's more important than being at church this morning. I remember when I was in uh, college, there was a fellow on my floor that faithfully went to Wednesday night Bible study and even taught it sometimes, but he never went to Sunday morning worship. And I never had the guts to ask him why he didn't show up for church on Sunday mornings, but I was sitting next to a girl who had more guts than I did because she asked him, why don't you come? And he said, well, I've got better things to do on Sunday mornings. Well, why don't you come on Sunday nights? Well, I've got to get ready for my classes on Monday. And that's easy to understand, isn't it? You know, it's easy to empathize with people. We all know what it's like to be busy and need a few extra hours. We all understand the need for more time, but it's the beginning of the forgetting of God. The demands of life pile up. It's easy to skip church. We need to love our neighbor as we love ourselves, but you know our neighbor is not very lovable. So it's very inconvenient to love our neighbor. It takes too much time. It takes too much energy. So we don't. Colossians 4, 6 tells us that our speech should be always gracious and seasoned with salt. But it's easier to tell the salty story, isn't it, than it is to speak with grace and kindness toward people. That's just the beginning of the careless forgetting of God. It doesn't stop here, though. It develops into an active resentment of people who try to remind us of these things, who try to place demands on our time, and before we know it, we're making God in our own image, and we've forgotten God, and even worse, we've started to follow other gods and become committed to their ways. And all this talk about forgetting, why is the preacher talking about forgetting on Communion Sunday? What did Jesus say? Do this what? In remembrance of me. This communion is, and the, way we, the reason we take it, don't forget. Don't forget that Christ died on a cross for the forgiveness of your sins. Don't forget that he led a life, a perfect life, so that you, he can credit that perfect life on your account. Don't forget that he rose from the dead so that we could live by grace through faith and walk with him. Don't forget that. Don't forget what he's done for you. Remember, he's sovereign even when that classroom of kindergartners is going out of control and you want to shoot them, Jennifer. Don't forget that he's sovereign even when your husband's in the nursing home and you, or the assisted living and you don't know when he'll get out, Kathleen. Remember that God is in control of all these things and that he's good and he's kind and he's gracious. Don't forget that. Remember. Remember. Always remember what God has done and is doing and will do for you because he's the God of the past, he's the God of the present, he's the God of the future, and he's there ahead of you. And we... You know, I hear people say, well, God's behind me and God's ahead of me. Well, he's, he's here right now, too. He's never left you and he's never forsaken you. Don't forget that. Remember. Let us pray. Lord, help us in the midst of our busy lives to always remember your commands. Help us to remember to love you with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. Lord, may we always seek to love our neighbor as you have loved us. Your son has said to us, if you love me, keep my commandments. Father, may we always remember to show our love for you by doing our level best to keep those commandments and help us to find our satisfaction in you and you alone and not in the things that uh, you have given to us. Help us to love you and forgive our brothers and sisters as you have loved us and forgiven us. And now, Lord, as we come to this time of Holy Communion, 
May we take it, take to heart the words of your blessed son when he said, do this in remembrance of me. As we eat the bread and drink the cup, may we remember the love and grace and mercy that you have shown us in the life, death, and resurrection of your precious son. It's in his name that we pray. Amen.